There's an interesting passage in St. Robert Bellarmine's work on canonization, chapter 9. Bellarmine is addressing an objection to the Catholic position on the issue of canonization. In the process, he makes a noteworthy comment about Donatist, quote, martyrs. This is our translation from the Latin. Bellarmine states, quote, but some object to a passage of Augustine in which he says that the bodies of many are honored on earth whose souls are tortured in Gehenna. I respond, this passage is perhaps not from Augustine, for I haven't been able to find it anywhere in his works. Moreover, it can be understood concerning the wicked who are honored with most proud tombs, although nevertheless their souls are tortured in Gehenna, or concerning the bodies of those not canonized, or concerning bodies fraudulently substituted for the bodies of saints, or lastly concerning the martyrs of the Donatus, who were being honored by heretics as martyrs, when their souls actually were being tortured in hell." End quote. St. Robert Bellarmine states that the martyrs of the Donatists were being tortured in hell, since they were heretics who died outside the church. On this point, Bellarmine was applying the Catholic dogma that there's no salvation outside the Catholic Church, and that nobody can be saved even if he has shed blood in the name of Christ, unless he has persevered in the bosom and unity of the Catholic Church, which was defined by Pope Eugene IV at the Council of Florence in the Bull Cantate Domino. The same bull taught that all those who are outside the Catholic Church, not only pagans but also Jews, heretics, and schismatics, cannot be saved unless before the end of their lives they enter the Catholic Church. Bellarmine's statement that Donatus martyrs are being tortured in hell serves to contradict the you-can't-judge heresy of liberals and modernists, who say that you can never conclude that someone went to hell, is evil, or is on the road to hell. On the contrary, if a person is clearly outside the church or rejecting God's truth or engaged in evil behavior, you must conclude that the person is on the road to hell. If the person dies outside the church, you must hold that the person went to hell. The church is teaching that there aren't any saints or martyrs outside the church, which Bellarmine simply applies in this passage, is directly contrary to the false teaching of Antipope Francis and the Vatican II sect. Based on Vatican II and statements of other post-Vatican II antipopes, Francis has repeatedly taught the heresy that there are non-Catholic saints and martyrs. His heretical teaching on that point, as well as many others, proves that he's a manifest heretic who does not profess the true faith. Therefore, he cannot be considered to be a Catholic or a valid pope. The Vatican II sect is not the Catholic Church, but the prophesied end times counterchurch, that is, the Whore of Babylon. For documentation of Francis's heretical teaching on this matter, see the articles on our website or one of our new flyers dealing with his heresies. There's another noteworthy passage in the same chapter of Bellarmine's work. This is also our translation. In regard to whether the Roman pontiff can err in canonizing a saint, Bellarmine writes, quote, There are two views about the third, that is, about whether the Roman pontiff can err in the canonization of saints. The first is the view of heretics, that the Roman pontiff can err in the canonization of saints. The other view is of Catholics, asserting that it is certain that the Church does not err in the canonization of saints, so that without any doubt saints canonized by the Church are to be venerated." End quote. The position that the Pope can err in canonizing is the position of heretics, Bellarmine says. The view of Catholics, however, is that it's certain that the Church does not err in canonizing. Although St. Robert Bellarmine was not infallible, he was reiterating the Catholic position on this issue. The position that Bellarmine describes as that of heretics is actually the position held by the Society of St. Pius X and many other false traditionalists in our day. Since they obstinately cling to the false position that the Vatican II antipopes are true popes, despite the mountain of evidence demonstrating the contrary, and some of the people, quote, canonized by the Vatican II antipopes obviously cannot be saints, such as antipope John Paul II, the Society of St. Pius X concludes that in the period after Vatican II, a pope and the church can err in solemnly canonizing saints. Their position is outrageously inconsistent, and it is not Catholic. It's the bad fruit of a false position on the crisis overall. Like many other groups in our day, the Society of St. Pius X has externals, but not the true faith. The Society of St. Pius X also denies the dogma that there's no salvation outside the Catholic Church. In their publications, they teach that souls can be saved in false religions, which is the opposite of what the Church believes, professes, and preaches. For example, in their publication, Time Bombs of the Second Vatican Council, the Society of St. Pius X teaches that, quote, it is clear that the followers of other religions can be saved under certain conditions, end quote. That is heresy. Likewise, Bernard Fillet of the Society of St. Pius X stated that a Hindu in Tibet could be in the state of grace and go to heaven. That is also heresy. In two of his books published by the Society of St. Pius X, namely, Against the Heresies and Open Letter to Confused Catholics, Archbishop Lefebvre, the founder of the Society of St. Pius X, 
taught the heresy that souls can be saved in false religions. And against the heresies, Lefebvre wrote that, quote, souls can be saved in a religion other than the Catholic religion, end quote, even giving the examples of Islam, Buddhism, etc. The fact that he said they are saved by the Catholic Church is irrelevant. It's still blatantly heretical to say that souls can be saved without the Catholic faith or in a false religion. In open letter to confused Catholics, Lefebvre stated that it would be an error to believe that no Muslim or animist will be saved. The same heresy, that souls can be saved without the Catholic faith, is held by almost all priestly groups at this time of the Great Apostasy, both Sedevacantist and non-Sedevacantist. For example, independent Bishop Donald Sanborn, who learned under Lefebvre, openly stated the heresy that souls can be saved in false religions. And if someone is saved who is in those false religions, it has nothing to do with that false religion. It has to do with the grace of God and their ignorance. The CMRI, which holds the same heresy, believes Jews, etc., can be saved without the Catholic faith. One of their priests even confirmed in writing that he agreed with the heretical view that a Jew who rejects the Lord Jesus Christ can be in the state of grace. That is, of course, a blatant rejection of the teaching of Scripture and Catholic dogma. Sadly, those priests and groups are not truly Catholic.